All right, so here I'm taking apart the electronic box on this exercise bike generator to simplify the electronics. Basically a car alternator requires a power source, 9 volt battery in this case, to uh, magnetize the, the rotor. That thing's all corroded. And there's a relay, and behind that there's some squash bug circuitry that's supposed to detect when the alternator is generating and switch the battery out and the load in. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of all that and greatly simplify. Part of the idea is that you need some resistance for an exercise bike and it needs to be easy to use so that the wife and children can use it. Not too technical and, and yet it works. Works right. So there's a, a voltage regulator, some capacitors, a Zener diode there on the lower right, and a tangle of wires. So we're going to find a switch, a push button that we can mount up on the handle so that instead of electronic circuitry detecting all of that, we'll just push a button. Here's some snap buttons that I scavenged out of something. So we'll cut just one of the buttons off of that board, solder some wires to it, and and it will energize the the rotor on the alternator to trigger it to generating. <clears throat> Soldering iron with light dimmer, heat control. Short length of wire. Fluxing and tinning the end of the wires. Scratching off the trace on the board. And we'll test for continuity when the switch is pressed. And it works. Well, except that really what I need is a single pole double throw switch. And this is a single pole single throw being just a push button. That ended up not working.
Here's my computer lab. Now we're going to drill a hole in the side of that box which is made of quarter inch Luon. So this wire will feed through that hole and then just tape to the handle in a position that's hopefully easy and comfortable to reach when you're pedaling. This exercise bike seems kind of flimsy, and it is, it's a cheap one, probably from Walmart. Uh, but it's actually quite solid and works well. Now that wire is going to flex and eventually would break from the flexing, but do I really care? No. Now we'll get rid of this dead bug circuitry and yeah, really simplify a lot of things. The tangle of wires makes it look complicated, but it isn't really. It's more complicated than it should be. Where do all those wires go? I don't know for sure. That's why we're getting rid of them. A little corroded battery. Got to save some things like the 9 volt battery snap. It's hard to remember where all those wires went, but it has to do with switching the load out of the circuit. Well, at the time switching the battery into the circuit to energize the alternator's rotor. And I know you guys are going to be asking for schematics, which I'm sorry, I just don't have at this point. Alright, so here we'll go and test it out. Um, notice that I have to pull out the 
the lighter plug with the light bulbs, hold the switch, and then push the lighter socket back in. <clears throat> so that's really inconvenient. That's not going to work. That's just too complicated. Alright, so this little push button didn't work so well. Um, because it only has a single pull I meant to switch. say single throw. Now what I'm going to do is use a double pull switch. Double throw is what I meant to say. It's got uh, normally open and normally closed contacts and a common. So we'll mount this switch up a little higher on the handle so it's easier to reach. We've got a longer piece of wire as well, which is three conductor. Fast forward through part of this. And that black wire is a piece of uh, power cord. It's black, white, and green for AC and ground. But in this case, the three conductors are used for. Um, battery and alternator and load. I'll hook those wires up. And we'll skip past that. So now this procedure is better for starting. Press the button, let go, and there you have light. Yep, that's a wooden pulley with a serpentine belt. I can only do that for about five minutes. I guess I'm out of shape. Alright, so I've used the 9 volt battery to energize, and it works, but those are kind of expensive and they don't have a lot of power. So you can get these AA battery holders that hold 8 AA's, and they have a 9 volt snap. And AA's are probably cheaper. So, thanks for watching.